Hey everyone, welcome to episode 51 of the Lofty Loops Yarns podcast. It is the year 2020. It is, what is it today? I don't even know. Um, I've been back to work for two days and the whole Christmas to New Year's break just has thrown me for a complete loop that I don't even know what day it is. Um, but actually it is the 3rd of January in the year 2020. So I hope you all had a fantastic celebration. I hope you had great holidays and got to spend time with family or by yourselves if that's what you wanted. Um, I just hope that you had a nice relaxing end of the year and you're recharged and ready for the new one. I did not make any resolutions this year. I am pretty terrible at keeping resolutions. So my biggest one, if I had to say something, I'd just be like, enjoy it. Enjoy the time. Be present. Um, just make the most of it. I don't know. Every other cliche I can think of. But um, before it was always running or knitting or what have you. And I just work better when I don't put that kind of pressure on myself. So I'm just going to enjoy it. So um, Vlogmas is over. Thank you to those who stuck around for the month of December and watched the Vlogmas episodes. That is where I've uploaded a day in the life video um, or a vlog of sorts every day through the month of December. Um, that is so much fun. It's always so much fun. This was my second year doing it and I'm already looking forward to this coming December. Um, but I want to thank you guys for those that watched along and commented and shared in the holiday festivities with me. If you want to go back and watch those, you can find them on their own playlist called Vlogmas 2019. Um, I'll link it up in the doobly-doo. Got something in my eyeball. Uh, but yes, I watched so many others that were doing Vlogmas and kind of am at a little bit of a loss for what to do with my life now that those are over. But, oh well, we uh, are back with a new podcast episode. Episode 50 happened in the middle of December, and um, that was full of all my Advent knitting projects. So I'm not going to go over any of those today. I have other projects to share with you guys. Uh, but if you're interested in seeing what I was knitting on throughout the Advent season and the Vlogmas season, then definitely go check out episode 50. I had started a couple different scrappy projects and um, an Advent project because I had three different Advent calendars I was knitting on. So, or knitting with, rather. Um, but I failed to mention previously or earlier that you can find me over on Instagram as Lofty Loops, where I am most active. I am also on Ravelry as The Lofty Loops, where everything I talk about and everything that I work on has its own project page. If you're interested in seeing any of the details or if I fail to mention anything, you can go check that out. Um, and I am the hand dyer behind Lofty Loops Yarns. So I own my own hand dyed yarn company um, and I am so excited to see what that brings in 2020. So. Without further ado, I'm just gonna jump right into it. Last year, I hosted a Plumpy Along where we were all knitting along on the Plumpy Shawl by Andrea Mowry. True to nature, I did not finish during my own cal because let's be honest, getting me to finish anything is just bonkers. Uh, but I finally bound off on New Year's Day. So this is the Plumpy Shawl. A shawl by Andrea Mowry. It is originally intended to be either knit in sport weight or DK. I broke the rules and decided I was going to knit mine in fingering weight. Um, so I had used Hedgehog Fibers sock, which is their, I want to say, I can't remember exactly what the contents are, but it's their sock base. Um, and I purchased three skeins that were originally a kit that was offered on the sport base. Um, so these colors I did not pick out on my own. I saw them together and fell in love. It's so large. Um, it is Gossip, which is the darker 
magenta e color here. Rose hip is this lightest pink, and then beach bunny is the blue. This is a brioche and garter shawl. So there are little bits of brioche in here. Um, I would say it's probably more on the advanced beginner if I was going to have to label it as something. Um, there are a few brioche decreases that are kind of a doozy, but once you get the hang of it, it's fairly simple. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the last brioche section, this long one right here, let me see if I can get a full shot of it. So you have this center spine. I'll share it better here in a moment, but there is a center spine, not a center spine, but there is a spine, it is off center, that runs up through the length of the shawl. And on one side you are brioching, and so this last side is very, very long, and it is all brioche. So this definitely took quite a while to get through. Um, let me see, here's that spine. So it just runs along. I will say, I think the longest it got was 180-ish stitches on the needle. So really, it is rather long, but it's not, it's pretty narrow. Um, and it's kind of an interesting, maybe I can stand up. It's kind of an interesting construction. It's so hard to get this whole thing in the shot. And I have been wearing it today by just wrapping it around. Um, I used a size US 3 needle um, only because I've knit brioche in a US 3 with fingering weight before and I liked I liked how it turned out, so that's what I went with for this. Obviously the pattern, if you should purchase it um, and knit it, it's going to suggest a different needle size because it's also going to suggest that you use either sport weight or DK weight. Um, so I kind of made mine up as I went, and I'm really happy with it. I kind of considered tossing some tassels on the end, um, but before I could do that, I went ahead and took all of my leftovers wound them off into 10 gram minis and set them aside for advent swaps that I am planning on doing later on this year. So um, that I suppose, it's not a resolution, more of a goal, um, but I would like to take all of my leftovers when I finish a project and just immediately create minis out of those. Um, that way, once we get closer to December, or if I'm doing just another swap with people, minis are always a great thing to toss into those packages. Um, so if I do that, then hopefully by the time December comes around, I should have a very large pile of minis to swap and gift or what have you. Um, so I have four 10 gram minis, I think of two of the colors and three minis of another. So I, I got a pretty good amount of minis out of the project. Um, so yes, uh, a lot of people had been asking me on Instagram how I did that and I just take a food scale and I set the leftover cake. So after I've um, snipped the yarn and finished up the project, I'm left with the cake. Um, I set that on a food scale, a small food scale, and I weigh it obviously so then I can go to Ravelry and say, okay, this took me this, this many grams. Um, but then I tie one end to my Swift and I just start winding it onto the Swift until that scale is 10 grams less than it started as. And then I snip that off and take it off the Swift and there you've got a 10 gram mini. So I just keep doing that over and over until I'm out of yarn. Um, I did end up with a few random grams here and there at the end, which I turn into a magic cake for myself for my crochet scrappy granny 
crochet granny stripe scrappy blanket. <laughs> and there are tons of YouTube videos on how to make a magic, uh, magic knot ball or magic cake or whatever it may be. Um, I just followed that and wound those extra few grams off so that will end up going into my crochet blanket. That was a lot of words. <laughs> um, but yes, the plumpy, I love it. I am really looking forward to knitting another one. And this time I definitely want to do um, the sport or the DK, I think. I think a DK would be so squishy. This one is definitely on the smaller side, but it is a good size for me. I don't necessarily like the ginormous shawls that I feel are smothering me, especially because I do feel like I'm fairly top heavy with some broad shoulders. Um, so when I'm wearing like a ton of stuff right up here by my neck, I think I look a little odd, um, but that's just me. So I do like the lighter, smaller shawls and scarves, um, but the squish factor on that DK would just be too much to say no to. Moving on, uh, I'm going to share just a few, just a couple works in progress with you. Like I said, if you're interested in seeing any of my advent knitting that I did through the course of December, please check out episode 50 where I go into detail with all of those projects. Um, and I've shared them a ton through the month of December on Vlogmas, so I don't want to keep repeating myself um, and boring you guys to tears because they are scrappy projects. So while I'm progressing on them, they don't look too terribly different than they did a while ago because they're just scrappy. So I do have a couple others that I would love to share with you that one is brand new, you will have not seen, you will not have seen it yet. And the other I shared very briefly on Vlogmas, but it's just too stinking cute not to talk about. First up on the works in progress. Um, if you are a viewer of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast, or if you follow Kay on Instagram, or if you follow Julie Ann Knitter on Instagram, who is, I'm going to get this right, Twin Stitches Designs, they are hosting a just looked at it guys. My brain, it's Friday. They are hosting a Stash Busters Cal right now and that is going to be a year-long knit-along where essentially the idea is to just knit from your stash. And as you can see, I have quite the stash. Um, and I just keep adding to it, which you will see later in acquisitions. But I love the idea of knitting through stash this year. I'm not going to say that I'm not buying more yarn because I am most definitely going to be buying more yarn. I cannot put myself on a yarn diet, nor will I ever put myself on a yarn diet. Um, again, <laughs> I've tried it before, it failed miserably. Um, but I would really, really like to start using some of these beautiful yarns behind me. Um, so this is a perfect way to jump into this cal. Each quarter they are going to be having a different theme. And if you knit something from Stash within that theme, then you get two entries. If you knit one of their designs that fall into that theme, then you get an additional entry. So all that to say, I'll link it below, but go check out the details in their Ravelry groups um, for much better explanation than I can give you. But I have cast on a pair of socks which is the first quarter's theme. So it's all about socks for the first three months. And I knit the cuff last night. And I am knitting the Heel Toe do -si do Socks by K. So that is a crazy sock lady design. Um, it is a beautiful pair of socks that just make the self-striping colorways just look so super awesome. Um, and I have been wanting to knit a pair of heel toe do -si do socks for quite a while. So this is perfect. The yarn I am using is Desert Vista Dye Works, the self-striping colorway, and this colorway is called Overexposed, which was inspired by the Maroon 5 album cover of the same name. And uh, if you guys know anything about me, you should know that I am 
completely obsessed with Maroon 5. Um, I've been following them for years. I go see them in concert by myself, <laughs> which I bought a ticket. They're coming to Lincoln, Nebraska, where I'm from. Um, they're coming in August, and I purchased a floor ticket, just one, because I'm going by myself, and it'll just be me and Adam. Never mind the other thousands of people that'll be there. It'll be just us, and it'll be great. Anyway, I digress. So I had to pick this up as soon as I saw it. And the colors are so pretty. So, like I said, that's as far as I got. I'm hoping to put quite the dent in these this weekend. Um, I have not knit a sock or knit on a sock for a very long time. My sock mojo had kind of died for whatever reason, or I just was distracted by other projects. Um, and I only finished one pair last year, you guys. That's crazy. One pair of socks. I've started quite a few, but I've only finished one. So I'm really motivated to bust through this and get it done. So I will definitely definitely be putting more work in on this soon. I am knitting that sock on a US 1.5, which is a 2.5 millimeter needle. And these are my little knit pro zings, which I really like. The next thing I want to share, I'm sure she does not watch the podcast, um, but my best friend is due to have her first baby in April, and I am so stinking excited for her that I can hardly stand it. It's been 12 years since I've had a baby um, of my own in the house, and... So I am completely living vicariously through her, and I plan on spoiling the heck out of her little baby boy. Um, as soon as she found out what she was having, we waited and waited and waited. Finally found out, I ran down to my office and picked out a skein of yarn so I could cast on for the teensiest, tiniest little baby sweater I've ever seen in my life. This thing fills my heart so much. It's so cute. So this is the first time I've ever knit anything for a baby, which is probably why I'm just drooling over how tiny it is. Like it's so small. Um, this is the Flax Light Sweater by Tin Can Knits. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. I omitted the garter ridge on the arms. Um, the shoulders and the arms do have this garter ridge detail. I just did plain stockinette, um, which was super easy to modify. And I am knitting it out of the You Know Nothing colorway from Lofty Loops Yarns, which is my shop. The You Know Nothing colorway was dyed up um, based on Jon Snow from Game of Thrones. It's just this really pretty gray with pops of bright blues and dark blues. And I think it's knitting up the cutest ever. So I've got just a few more inches left on the body. <clears throat> and then I will pick up and knit the sleeves. And I am knitting the newborn size. <clears throat> so this is the smallest size possible. I'm really hoping that she does not have a very large baby <laughs> because I'm a little bit worried about it fitting. But I've got a progress keeper, a couple progress keepers on here. Um, this one is from Fangirl Fibers and that is where I was when I picked it up last to work on. So I just wanted to see how much I was getting done. And this thing is zooming, you guys. Knitting baby sweaters is going to be like instant gratification because this thing is flying. And my beginning of the round is being notated. 
by this stitch marker from Corner of Craft. It was the wonderful, lovely Hannah. And it's a beautiful snowflake because winter and Jon Snow and you know nothing. So yes, look at how small it is. Um, I have a feeling there are going to be lots more baby sweaters in my future because I feel like once I knit one and see how cute it is, um, I'm going to knit him all of the sweaters and all of the things. So he'll definitely have to have one for, you know, six months and nine months and a year and oh, it's so stinking cute. I can't even. Uh, this is knit out of my Lofty Sock Base, which is a 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and it is a two-ply, and I love the stitch definition and how soft and squishy it is. So I hope, I hope he loves it too. Not that, you know, he'll be able to say otherwise, but my biggest fear is that he's going to be allergic to wool, and then I will be very, very sad. So she has not seen this yet. I haven't even told her what colors I was using. Um, I'm saving it as a surprise. I want to show her the finished piece. Um, that is why I have not posted on social media or anything like that either, um, just because I know she follows me and I don't want to give away the surprise, but I'm pretty certain she doesn't watch the podcast. Um, and if you are, well, I'm sorry, you're spoiled. I've spoiled you and that's all there is to it. So. Little Dolph's gonna have an adorable sweater. That's not his real name. That's just what we call him. She's not naming her baby Dolph. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so that's my works in progress. I'm really excited to plow through this sock, um, finish this baby sweater. I'm really happy that I finished this. This was a really big push towards the end of the year. I had tried to get it done before the end of the year, but because we left to go do some New Year's Eve festivities, I had to finish the last row and a half the next morning, which I did. First thing, got my coffee, woke up, finished this, put it in the bath. So it was very close. Had we not gone out um, and enjoyed ourselves like normal humans on New Year's Eve, then this definitely would have been done, but that's okay. Um, say la vie. So, yes, let's talk acquisitions. There's a mountain back here. <laughs> uh, December was a good month. December was a treat yourself month. December was a... I have no control over the things I'm tossing into my cart and buying month. And December was a month of all of the holiday colorways. I have no regrets. All right, the first things that I want to share with you guys are the full skeins from my advent calendars this year. So if you'd followed along with Vlogmas, you will have seen me opening up minis each day through the month of December which was so much flipping fun. I can't even handle it. Um, most dyers include a full size skein of yarn for day 25 or Christmas day. So I stuck mine up in the tree and they came all nicely wrapped and everything. And I opened them up while we were opening up the rest of our gifts on Christmas day. So if you watch Vlogmas, you will have seen these already, um, but I just want to share them again in case people missed it because they are too beautiful not to share. Um, but the first advent calendar I received was uh, from Sweet Sparrow Yarns, who is the wonderful Julie, and she's Sweet Sparrow Knits on Instagram. And this was the skein on day 25 and it is called cold hands warm heart on her nut hatch base which is 75 25 superwash merino nylon and it is just this really beautiful light brown and there's tons of beautiful subtle speckles in there and I adore it this will likely be going in uh, to some sort of shawl project I'm sure because this would be a fantastic colorway to pair up with another one. 
um, which oddly enough, it goes great with the other day 25 skein I received from Cat Sandwich Fibers. So MJ is one of my favorite dyers and has been for quite a while. So I jumped on her advent calendar this year and day 25 was the first snowfall colorway. And I am so, so excited because in two weeks, I will be in New York City for the first time in my life at Vogue Knitting Live in New York, and MJ will be there in a booth, and I told her that I plan on diving into the yarn like Scrooge McDuck dives into his coins. I am so stoked to meet her. I'm so excited to see all of her yarn in person. Um... There are so many other fantastic people that will be there too. I'm just over the moon excited about going. Um, but I'm so stoked to meet MJ in real life, finally, um, because I have been obsessed with her. I sound like a creepy stalker. I swear I'm not a creepy stalker. <laughs> I follow an amazing dyer on Instagram um, that if you're not familiar with, yet you should definitely go check them out uh they also had a beautiful advent calendar this year that i am i definitely had fomo um while watching others on vlogmas so next year it will be at the top of my list to hopefully grab but i ordered a couple skeins from uh Grenouille. It is a French word, and I am terrible at speaking French, but it is the French word for frog, um, so I believe it is Grenouille, my terrible American accent. Uh, so I grabbed a couple skeins of their single ply sock yarn, which is 100% superwash merino, and this is the lavender colorway. And I think this is the one that I saw on an Instagram post that I fell in love with. And so I went to the shop to purchase it and saw this one because one doesn't simply buy one skein of yarn. I had to grab another. So this is the Ghost Moth. Yes, Ghost Moth colorway. There's a cute little progress keeper on there. It's really beautiful pale silvery with greens and blues. And then this one has a very pinky lavender base with loads of green, blue, and brown speckles. So I love the moodiness of their colors. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to have these. I have no idea what they'll become. Um, but yeah, they are definitely going in stash and I'm super excited. Another Instagram enabled purchase I made <laughs> was from the wonderful Samantha of Lavender Loon Yarn Co. And she had posted that she had a couple, or she, not a couple, but she had posted some of her uh, holiday colorways. And so I think, I can't remember which one caught my eye originally, but I went to her shop and ended up grabbing a couple because again, I can't apparently buy a single skeins of yarn. I have to make it worth their time, right? <laughs> that's what I, that's, you know, anyway. Uh, so I grabbed Christmas in the City on her DK weight, which is 100% superwash merino. And a very, again, light silvery color with all of the beautiful Christmas themed speckles. And then I also grabbed Hearthside, which is a taupey brown with greens and reds and browns. It's very pretty. So I think these are going to make some really pretty hats. That, that was my intention anyway when I purchased these was a couple um, hats, maybe hold mohair with them. I haven't quite decided yet, but again, that is Lavender Loon Yarn Co., and I did meet her at BKL in Minneapolis, and I believe, I can't remember if she's going to New York or not, um, but another dyer that I super love and 
happy to have some more of her yarn for my stash. Last but certainly not least is my continued love affair with Long Dog Yarn <laughs> and Brandy's Yarns. I told her that I'm like, one of these days I'll actually knit with your yarn and I won't just co collect it. Um, but so far I've just been collecting. Um, actually, I take that back. I do have a project on the needles using her yarn. So see, I am using it. It's fine. Um, but I wanted to grab her December 2019 colorway. So unfortunately, this can no longer be purchased. Um, it is only available during that month. Um, and I asked her to dye it up on her single ply base because I am a girl who loves single ply yarn. And then I had asked her which would go better, Golden Glow which is another colorway of hers, or gingerbread. And while I was impatiently waiting, like within 20 seconds, how could you not respond to me in 20 seconds? I just went ahead and said, you know what, I want them both. Um, I'll take the guesswork out of it. So this one is gingerbread, this one is golden glow. And again, she was lovely enough to dye them up on single ply for me so I could put the three of them together and have a three color shawl. And I'm really, really excited about it. And while I was perusing her shop, I also grabbed Frosted Window Pane, which is one of her winter collection colorways. Again, on single ply. So, <laughs> uh, I just love it. I love her yarn so, so, so much. So there's a long dog yarn. And that's all I have. That's all I have. Uh, as far as yarn acquisitions go, um, I will share. I'm going to jump into a little bit of spinning um, because I do have some spinning to share with you. Um, and then I also have a full size braid from the Wool Fiend Spinners Advent Calendar that I had purchased for the month of December. Um, day 25 was a four ounce braid of fiber to spin with. So let me go grab that and then I will share with you the spinning that I had done over the month of December. So in Emily's Spinners Advent, she is Wool Fiend on Etsy and I'll link her below. Um, she, you could either get mini bats or um, bumps of top or roving um, each day through the month of December. And I chose the roving top. And so every day I would get a little bit of a fiber braid and spun those up. I tried to keep up as best I could, but I definitely fell behind. Um, and then on day 25, I opened up this gorgeous braid of BFL in the Sugar Plum Christmas colorway. So it's very pretty and I am so excited it's BFL because I had so much fun spinning the little bumps of BFL that came in the calendar. That was my favorite part of the advent this year was Emily included all different breeds and all different fibers for each day. So I really got to try them all out and figure out what I liked, maybe what I didn't necessarily like as much. Um, that was fantastic to get to sample different fibers for spinning. And it was just enough to where I could, you know, try different techniques and things like that, which was really great. And then Julia Sweet Sparrow Yarns, um, included different bases in her as her 10 gram minis for each day, which was also phenomenal. And I think this year, or this coming advent, for my advent calendars, I will be doing different bases too, because that was just the best way to sample what a shop has in stock, um, as opposed to just getting all of the same. So um, I thoroughly enjoyed the variety of everything this year, and this braid is just stunning, and I am looking forward to spinning it up. But for now, it goes into my wool stash, 
and uh, I'm going to continue spinning through the rest of my advent bumps. And I ended up with three skeins of yarn from those advent bumps so far. So I was spinning on my electric eel wheel nano which is from dreamingrobots.com. I will leave a link in the description box below, but it is an electric wheel and it is very lightweight. I believe it is 3D printed. Um, I received mine a few months ago, maybe six months ago now, and I just love it. I can sit at my dining room table and I can spin. I can stick it to my coffee table and spin. I can re I've taken it in the car and I spun in the car. Um, it has a USB port so you can either plug it into the wall or plug it into a USB charger or USB adapter, whatever. So that's what I used in the car. Um, but each day that I opened up my advents, I would split the bump in half and I would wind one half onto a bobbin and the other half onto a bobbin. And so I was spinning between two bobbins each day. The bobbins on the electric eel wheel nano only hold about two ounces of fiber, maybe. Um, they are very small because the thing is very small. It's a nano, um, which, you know, small. Um, <clears throat> and because of that, I was a little worried about how I was going to manage all of the fiber. However, I got it down to a system that worked really well for me. The first one that I did, I spun four days worth. And at that point, the bobbins were looking pretty full. So I ended up plying those two together. And I came away with 62 finished grams or 161 yards of about a DK weight. And it is, this one is Wensleydale, BFL Silk, Rambouillet, and Corydale. And I love the colors in this. So this is exactly what I was talking about, about the amount of just different breeds, different colors. It was just so much fun to get some really unexpected results. And I love it. I love it so much. The, then I fell behind. <laughs> I fell behind by quite a bit. Um, and so the next skein that I did was, oh no wait, I take that back. That was day four through eight, I believe. So that was technically the second skein. Um, days one through four ended up in this skein plus one extra that I tried to cram onto the bobbins to hopefully fit a little bit more fiber. So this again was just a random mixture of different wools. Um, and I got 70 grams from that one and 2.4 ounces, 178 yards, and it is another DK to worsted. So really pretty. Having so much fun with these. And then my favorite so far. So once I fell behind, then I realized that I was kind of stockpiling little fiber bumps. And so I started with some color management at that point instead of just a random assortment. Um, so I put some of the similar colors together and um, this was the first one that I put together in the pinks and mauves and peachy colors and some purples. And so I really love this one. Uh, this was 66 grams and 3.2 ounces and 205 yards, which is the 
<clears throat> lightest of the three so far and is probably about a heavy fingering sport weight. Um, there are some very thin sections in here which you can see and some heavier ones so consistency is still not that great but that's okay I love it anyhow. Um, this one I did a little bit different so instead of splitting and splitting the wool and putting them on the bobbin in the same order. I split the wool, spun the first bobbin, and then spun the second bobbin in reverse order, which meant that if I started with, let's just say a Corydale, for example, um, Corydale would then be the last thing spun onto the second bobbin. So when I applied them together, they are definitely mixed with a non-like wool to kind of help balance out um, the feel of it a little bit because I've noticed on the other two that the parts where I have just a long chunk of um, or a long stretch of like Wesleydale for example or BFL you can definitely tell when that's placed next to something like Polworth um, or Corydale so I kind of tried to balance it out just a little bit so it would feel have a similar feel throughout. All of these have been washed, um, hung to dry, and then weighed and skeined up real nice, and they are going into my hand spun stash. I still have no idea what I'm going to be knitting with them. I've never knit with my own hand spun, so that is another something else that I'd love to do in this new year, is finally knit with my own hand spun. And I plan on having a lot of it <laughs> um, because I really want to get through the rest of those bumps and then I have a lovely fiber stash I'd love to work through. So uh, doing the Spinner's Advent really rejuvenated my love for spinning and like I said having the variety just really sparked that inspiration to um, spin things up, try new things, learn more. And I just, I had a blast. So thank you, Emily. This was so fantastic. And I cannot wait until the next, next year, the next round. So, um, I think that's all I have to share with you guys as far as making goes. There is lots of yarn up in the shop if you're interested. That is at loftyloopsyarns.com. And I've put up some uh, full-size skeins from my Avon full size gains from my advent calendar colorways. So if you received my advent calendar or you've been watching along on Instagram and some of them have piqued your interest, you can now get full size gains. Please reach out to me if there's anything you don't see in the shop but you are interested in because 99% of them are repeatable and can be dyed on a dyed to order basis. Um, there are only one or two that cannot be repeated, unfortunately, because I did not write down the recipes, but the majority of them I did, so I can repeat them and get them to you on any base that you would like. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, mystery clubs. I have been asked quite a bit if the mystery clubs will continue in the new year, and the answer to that is yes. However, I am still trying to determine how I want that to work. Um, so I'm tossing around some ideas in my head. There will be a newsletter going out in the next few days, hopefully within the next week at the most, um, on how that will work in the new year. So if you're interested in those, please sign up for the newsletter, um, so you can be notified of what that all will entail. I'm really, really hoping to either do a subscription service, so it's kind of like you opt into the club and you don't have to remember to renew each month. Um, it will just, it will keep you in the club until you go in and cancel it. Um, I had a lot of people reach out to me last year because they missed the cutoff for getting in on certain months and they were really bummed about it. And um, I know I've been there before as well. So um, I'm hoping to do that. I have a few details to work out with that before I can offer it though. Um, but it's getting there. And then another thought that I had was maybe separate from the mystery monthly mystery club, I would love to do quarterly clubs where you receive multiple skeins. Um, maybe they all go together. 
maybe they're all based on a certain theme, things like that. So like I said, tossing around ideas, I just need to sit down and work through the details so I can get those listings up and get that information out to you. But I want to say a huge thank you to all of you that had joined me last year in the Mystery Club and they are one of my favorite parts about dyeing because it's really when I get to experiment and try new things and be inspired by new themes or photos or nature or whatever and just have a play in the dye pots and I've loved each and every single one that has come out of that surprisingly. Um, so and I've heard nothing but great things as far as feedback goes so thank you guys so much. I love it. I know surprises aren't for everyone uh, but those of you that love surprises I, I am a sucker for a mystery club and surprise so um, either are or you aren't and that's totally fine so again keep an eye out um, there will not be I do know for sure there will not be anything in January though um, if I open up a sign up in January it will not ship until after the first of February because like I mentioned previously I am going to be in New York for um, about a week for Vogue Knitting Live and as just a girl's trip, which I am so excited about. Um, and that falls right during the time I would normally die up and ship out those mystery clubs. So obviously I'll be in New York and not doing work. <laughs> um, so if I do open up something for January, just know that I'll die them all up when I get home and then they will go out likely in the first week of February and then hopefully we'll be back to our regularly scheduled program. Um, but again, more info to come in the newsletter. Um, and speaking of New York, if there's going to be any sort of meetups happening, please holler at your girl and let her know. I have not heard anything about any podcast meetups or anything, which is crazy because normally everyone knows the plan. So either I've been living under a rock or nobody's talking about it yet. But I really am looking forward to meeting up with people getting to see people in person. Um, yes, and I'm also really excited because it sounds like we're gonna go see Hamilton on Broadway, what? I'm so excited. Um, so I plan on completely living it up in New York in two weeks from now. Um, so there probably won't be a podcast before then, but I will for sure be vlogging along the way. So be on the lookout for that. And again, if you're going, leave me a comment below and let me know. Reach out on Instagram um, if you're going or planning on being there. And I will do my best to let you guys know when I'll be at the market, where I'll be otherwise. Um, if there is some sort of meetup or maybe I need to make my own meetup, I don't even know. Um, but I will do my best to share that with you. And I want to meet all of you guys. So... Uh, that's where I'm going to leave you. I could go on and blather about some life stuff, but I feel like you guys have gotten a giant dose of my life over the last month, and not a lot has happened other than just relaxing for break and watching so much Netflix and Apple TV+. Plus. If you guys haven't watched any of those shows yet, highly recommend. Everything I've watched on there so far has been fantastic. Um, which does not surprise me in the, in the least. It's Apple. Like, come on, they cannot do anything wrong, apparently. But C with Jason Momoa is fantastic. I am watching Servant, which is also really great. It's, um, I think it's directed. M. Night Shyamalan has something to do with it. So it's got that very obvious M. Night Shyamalan feel. <laughs> Um, so it's quite the ride and it's really creepy so far and I love it. Um, I watched the Aeronauts on Amazon Prime that has Eddie Redmayne. We watched that last night and that was also fantastic. And I finished The Marvelous Miss Maisel over break. I'm telling you guys, we watched so much TV and I did so much knitting. It's ridiculous. I'm surprised I still have fingers and they haven't fallen off. <laughs> um... So if you guys have any other suggestions on what you guys are watching or what I should binge now because I'm literally running out of things to watch, 
Um, leave them below because we need some new shows. But anyway, I hope that you guys are so excited for 2020 and I hope you had a fantastic wrap up to your 2019. I am so not sorry to see 2019 go. <sighs> Sigh of relief, everyone. We made it to a new decade. Let's do all of the things. I'll see you next time. Bye.